Well, hello there, and welcome back to the very latest episode of my Love Machine podcast. Now, many of the people that listen to this might be perhaps second time around dating. Maybe you've been divorced, maybe you've been widowed, maybe you've been separated, or maybe things just haven't worked out the right way. So today, I'm going to be talking about all the different ways you can perhaps find your perfect partner again. And to join me, I've got a very, very special guest today. I've got a great expert for you one of the UK's leading matchmakers, Hayley Bystrom. And Hayley is the owner and the founder of the Bose Lion Matchmaking Partnership Agency. Have I got that right there, Hayley? That's correct, yes. Hello, James. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? I am very good, thank you. I am in, it's a nice sunny day today-ish, and I'm in a positive mood, which is always very, very good. Well, it's Friday, um, so of course. <laughs> it's Friday today when we're recording this, and Friday, but every day seems to gel into one, doesn't it? Who knows what happens? Weekends are weekdays right now. Um, yes. <laughs> so obviously I've known you quite a few years now, but I'd like you to just tell my listeners who you are and what you do. So I'm Hayley Bystrom, and I run matchmaking agency Bose Line Partnership, which I started in 2009. Um, so we're a traditional matchmaking agency and we have offices in London and Surrey, but really we have members all over the UK and internationally and we, we take a more traditional method to matchmaking in that we meet all of our clients personally face to face and we really get to know them and build a, a very close rapport with our members so that we can successfully match them and hand pair them with their compatible partner. Fantastic. Now, I know that you're really good because I've sent quite a few clients over the last year to you who have all been very, very happy. But I have to say, what makes you, why do you want to be a matchmaker in the first place? I, I don't actually think I did, <laughs> to be honest. I know many people have aspirations for it, but it wasn't something that was my intended career. Um, I was a wedding planner for many years. That was my dream job. Always wanted to be a wedding planner. And I used to organise quite high profile events for um, let's say fairly Z-less celebrities but still um, <laughs> and but I, during my 20s I was married and then I got divorced and a divorced wedding planner is a little bit bitter a little bit cynical and so I probably wasn't serving my clients to the best of my ability um, and so I ended up staying within the romance industry because I am, you know, that, that, that is a passion for me, but looking at the opposite end of the spectrum and looking at single people. Um, and that was probably about 14, 15 years ago. And uh, I would started working at a matchmaking agency, which I'd never heard of the concept before. Um, I, I imagine you hear that quite a bit, actually. Um, a I lot do. Of people <laughs> people don't understand it. Although certain TV shows recently have helped people understand how it works. That's it? true. Yeah, it has become more on people's radar in recent in recent years or recent decades. Um, and so I started working for an agency and they catered for a very niche market. And I just thought, well, where do people like I go? You know, I was single at the time and looking to meet a partner, but there didn't seem to be an agency that catered for people within my age group and within my um, you know professional background and busy lifestyle and I did quite a bit of research into it really couldn't find it and thought well I'll just do it myself um, and that's how it started and my business plan was to last in business a year actually that's always my business <laughs> plan last a year and at the end of that year I last another year <laughs> and now we're 12 years strong so um, <laughs> that is amazing that because so many agencies don't last that long there's only a few out there that have been going that long Yes, and I think there's a concept that it's uh, a way to make a quick buck, in honesty, mm. because, you know, we, we attach a certain fee to a matchmaking agency because there's a huge amount of time investment involved in it, and that costs money. Um, and so I think people see it from the outside and think it is a way of making very quick money turnaround, but that's not the case at all. It is incredibly hard work, there is huge amounts of time investment, and there's a lot of people behind the scenes making it happen um, so there are agencies and um, uh, businesses that crop up all the time and you see them and then one year later they, they don't exist um, and then there's a few of us just clinging on keeping going <laughs> <laughs> Can you, people do ask me that all the time they say why do agencies cost so much money and uh, putting you on the spot slightly can you just elaborate on the, what does go on behind the scenes and how why there is such a big investment 
I've got yeah. my answers for this, but I'd love to hear what you say. So from my point of view, from, from Boseline Partnership um, membership uh, journey, we do an awful lot of the work up front, a huge amount of work, even before we take a membership fee. And that's to ensure that we're taking on the right people. I'm a huge believer in the due diligence process of making sure that we take on a member where we feel very confident of delivering success and they feel very confident that they're with the right agency because if we're both in that mindset it will generate higher success if there's uncertainty I don't know if it's the right person I don't know if it's the right agency chances are you're starting on the wrong footing and it's not going to work so for me the due diligence process is huge so I would start with having a, a chat with people over the phone, which can be anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. And then I would meet them face to face. And we say it's going to be an hour, but you know me, James, I can chat. So <laughs> those meetings yeah. can often end up being a couple of hours. <laughs> and then after that, I would share profiles about our members and end up answering a lot of questions about the membership. And that's even before we've started. So, you know, we're, we're sort of a day's work into things. Um, and we create profiles on members, we organize photo shoots, you are our resident dating coach, so we organize um, the interaction with yourself to organize a coaching session, and you know, we haven't even started introductions yet, so that's the sort of amount of work that goes into things, and then with our members, they are with us for an annual membership, so 12 months service with a six month hold period, so effectively 18 months, and we chat to them on a weekly basis. And we are then sourcing and searching for introductions to match them with. And we're talking all those through with each introduction. And then after they've met someone, we're then taking feedback from all of those. It's a lot of hours that go into it. And we work with hundreds and hundreds of people and I can't do it myself. So therefore I have a team of matchmakers that are involved as well. Um, and then there's advertising to make people aware of us. We get a lot of members through word of mouth referral, and that's my favorite form of advertising. But, you know, I'm literally just, that's the tip of the iceberg. So it's, it's time investment, and yes, it's financial investment, and it's having a team, and it's working from offices, and it's doing our advertising and making sure we're placed in the right publications that suit our niche market. Um, and, you know, if you look at the financials behind that, that all adds up. <laughs> It's so true. I think it's important people realise this and you've explained very, very clearly why there is a cost for this. And you mentioned due diligence as well and making sure people are right for the agency, people are suitable and people are in it for the right intentions. And I think having that fee as well puts people off that are time wasters or not particularly serious about it. And all this is absolutely really, really important if you are a second time around dating. Because maybe you've had a relationship before and things haven't worked out and you think, do you know what? I want to do it again. I haven't got any time to waste. I want to get on with this. Now, yeah. I believe you, you you remarried yourself, didn't you? So you're second time around success, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Well, actually, no, I'm not married. I've been with my partner for 12 years. Oh. So I was previously married for, oh gosh, to be honest, James, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to remind you. <laughs> Raging up the memories. Um, <laughs> uh, six or seven years in my 20s. <laughs> Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, doing it second time around. And I think that's why a lot of my members relate to me, even though we might be different ages. So I'm in my early 40s. Um, but, you know, I, I work with a great deal of members. My Probably my majority market is mid 40s, 50s, 60s. And, you know, how do people sort of 20 years older than me relate to me? Because they have to. They, they have to believe that I understand their situation. Um, and that probably is because I've been through what they've been through and I have a relatable background to them um, and that counts for a lot um, to make sure that we're on the same wavelength. It really does they have to know that you are in it for the right reasons and that you've got to have empathy and understanding and know what they're going through which you have them mm -hmm. and of course they've got to like you they've got to like the matchmaker because they've been working with you or your team for quite a long time for a year yes. and that I think it's important to stress that because Many of these agencies are out there and they might be quite cheap. They might seem on the face of it quite cheap and they see, well, they're a bargain. They're doing me a really good deal. They're first place on Google on the, on the paid AdWords. And yeah. you think, hang on a minute. When you join them, you have no contact with that matchmaker ever again. You never speak to them. You can't get hold of them. And the quality yeah. of the matches is really, really poor. If you want to invest in your future and you want to find a long-term relationship, I do recommend joining an agency like Hades because they are really going to help you. There's no messing around, is there, Hayley? 
it's getting on with it. Definitely no messing around. And it is, you know, as I said, that due diligence procedure, making sure we take on the right people is so important because it's yes, I run a business, but we deal with people's feelings and emotions. And chances are, you know, they'd have been in long term relationships before and there may be some hurt there. And a lot of the reason why they're coming to us is they don't want to uh, they don't want to make the same mistake. They want to make sure it's the right person. They're investing in this for the future. Um, and they want to make sure they're doing it correctly. And so we don't take that lightly. That's a huge responsibility. And so uh, we make sure we take on people where we feel hugely confident. And that's not always the case. Sometimes we're not the right agency. That's not to say that person can't be matched. They can. We're just not the right agency to do it. And I have full confidence in saying that to someone because I would never waste someone's time or money or play games with their emotions. It's, you know, that we're a service industry and it doesn't take long for bad word to get around. So we make sure that does not happen. And we make sure we take on the right people where we can deliver the excellent level of service that we're proud of. Um, and then they go off and tell their friends and family about it. And that's how we get new business. <laughs> it is. I think companies that have been going and have a very bad reputation don't last very long. Because like you said, word does spread. It spreads amongst the matchmakers, amongst the singles. And they realise, hang on a minute. This is a bit of a rip off here. So you've got to go with someone, someone that's been going 12 years, who understands the customers completely. It's always going to be a good choice. So speaking of your clientele, who are your typical clients that come to you? So our typical clients are often fairly busy people that have a lot going on in their lives. Now, that could be careers, children's hobby. They live full and active lives. And they very much want to meet someone, but because of their lifestyle demands, they're not crossing paths with the right people that they would form a relationship with. And as the years have gone by of running the agency, people are more and more busy. I mean, I have a lot of members who are officially retired. They don't seem to ever retire though. They're always <laughs> doing something. And they're actually more busy in their retirement than they were in their careers. Um, and that's just modern living. Everyone's busy, everyone's doing something. And we have our blinkers on and we just go about our day focused on what we need to do in our day. And we don't see the wood for the trees and what's around us. Um, and so therefore it's harder and harder to meet people. You know, we're all engrossed in our phone screens, we're all engrossed in our fast paced lifestyle. So even if we are crossing paths with people, we don't notice. Um, so our clientele tends to be busy professionals. Um, and in normal situations, not during COVID, uh, they might be traveling a lot with work, they might have very busy work days, they might be recharging the batteries at the weekend. So where are they going to meet someone? And they come to us, to make sure that we are keeping the eye on the ball on their personal side of life so that they can focus on their business side of life. And you know, it's something that's important to them, but left to their own endeavors, they often get sucked back to their work. So we work with a lot of entrepreneurs. That's a really big market for us. People where their roles aren't nine to five, they're kind of 24 seven. Um, and like us, really? <laughs> <laughs> like us exactly like us on the computer at midnight <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. and that is a big market for us where you know perhaps they will think right well this is important for me I really want to meet someone and they will focus on their personal life and then actually two weeks down the line a big project comes in and that's it they're sucked back into work and a few months go by and so where it's very stop start in terms of their efforts of, of finding that partner for life so they outsource to us to make sure that we adopt that consistency that's required to meet the right person absolutely it's so important that they do that because having some focus is the key to making this work if people are distracted by work or distracted by all the strange things going on in the world they're not going to be on track for what they want and i think you absolutely do do that you make sure that they're getting what they want you're arranging the dates for them all they got to do is make contact and then turn up but you yeah. mentioned you mentioned just now about crossing paths and um, that isn't possible at all right now, is it? Crossing paths of anybody. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's been completely taken away. So uh, there is that natural thought of, you know, the right person will be in the right place for me at the right time. And I'm a huge believer in fate and the universe and things like that. And I kind of think that we just give it that little nudge over the finish line that it needs. Um, you know, the chances of two people being within my agency at the same time and me introducing them, there's a lot of fate involved in that. So I don't discount it. But we just sort of live in a day and an age where we're not paying attention to those sort of things and not noticing. Um, and so that's what we do. We just make sure those matches happen that should happen. 
somebody asked me the other day, they said, James, I want to meet someone naturally. I want to be able to bump into them at a party, eyes across a crowded room, all that sort of thing. And that's how I believed in finding love. And they also believed in the law of attraction. Whatever you do, you're going to attract, which I believe. Yes. I said, well, that's absolutely true. You can have that. But at the moment, you can't do that. And that's not an option. So joining an agency, even joining a dating site, an online dating site, is still taking action. That's the only way anything's going to happen right now, by doing something and taking that initial step. Otherwise, Mr. and Mrs. Wright is not going to knock on your door right now. And if they are, they're going to have a mask on. So it's not, it's not going to happen at all. Exactly. So, yeah. So people often quite nervous about joining an agency if their second time around dating, thinking, well, I'm not really sure what to expect. Who am I really going to meet? Are these going to be quality matches? Is it a good use of my time? So how would you prepare somebody who wants to join with you to find love again? That, that is a, a, a big issue for many people that come to me. So the majority of my members have previously been married. They may be divorced. They uh, may be widowed. And they just don't know where to start. Perhaps when they were last dating, it was 15, 20, 30 years ago. And the dating environment now is completely different. And there's a huge amount of fear and uncertainty and almost to the point where people you know, kind of go, actually, I'm just going to be single forever. I'll just leave it. But it doesn't need to be that. I mean, yes, you have to be more proactive these days. Um, so what we do is we're, we're kind of a safety net for our members. And we just make sure that, that dating is fun and enjoyable rather than scary and daunting. Because it should be. It should be fun meeting people that you wouldn't cross paths with and going to new places and trying new things. That's fun and it's hopeful. Um, and so I, I do hate the fact that sometimes people think dating is just a chore and, and, and you know, take it or leave it. It's, I mean, it's a means to an end of being in a lovely relationship. Um, but we make sure that it's done in a way that's fun and enjoyable and we hold our members' hands. And I think that's why we get a lot of people that, that have that fear and uncertainty and why we tend to sort of focus more on the divorcees and widowers and people that haven't dated for a long time and just don't know where to start. That is a big market for us. Um, and, you know, we make it fun and we make them see that their fears are unfounded. And by putting yourself out there a little bit, you know, by giving in that first instance, the rewards are so huge and it's so worth doing with that guiding hand to help you. <laughs> it really is. This is what I do as part of a coaching uh, process. I make sure people realise that dating is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. And to yeah. realise that opportunities and adventures are ahead of you and people need to realise that. But having said that, I'm not sure if you've come across this yourself recently, but a lot of people have decided either to go full steam ahead and do this, or they're putting their love lives on hold or on pause, hoping for lockdown to be eased, the pandemic to go over. I have my own thoughts on this, but I'd like to hear what you would recommend and say to somebody. Uh, my recommendation would be to be proactive, because as you said, the, the natural way of meeting people that everyone really hopes for, because yes, that's, that's kind of the dream, that has been entirely stripped away. We're not going to be at large weddings anymore. We're not going to be with our friends in social environments for, for quite a long time in big circles where, you know, you need a certain amount of numbers to, to have that right person there. I, I am a believer in quality over quantity, but you've got to have the people around and, and there aren't. The, you know, we're not putting ourselves in these situations with having large groups around us. And we won't be for a couple of years at least. Um, so you've got to find other methods and be proactive about it. And we've had two different situations where members are, like you say, full steam ahead. I'm not going to let this lockdown stop me from living my life or making plans or getting things in the diary and being prepared for when restrictions are eased that I can go, you know, I can hit the ground running. We have a lot of members with that mentality where they're setting things up and they're building rapports with people over the telephone and they're arranging socially distanced walks. And gradually we'll be able to do coffees and drinks and dinners and move forward into that. And then we have the people that are just putting everything on hold and waiting in limbo. And once restrictions ease, then they'll hit the ground running. But to be honest, there's going to be a whole load of people ahead of you because they've already put the plans in place and they're prepared. Um, so that's what we're finding. We have members that are joining us and we're getting their profiles created and we're setting up a pipeline of people and understanding all about who they want to meet so that when we and we can start to drip feed that now, we can start building those reports of telephone conversations and go for the walks. Um, and they're, they're a 
good few steps ahead of the people that are holding off and waiting to do it when restrictions ease. Um, I kind of relate it to running. At the moment, I think, shall I go running? I'm a bit of a fair weather runner. <laughs> and I like to be in shape, but the weather's not that good. But do I want to start getting in shape in summer when I'm going to be wearing, you know, lighter clothes and want to be in shape? Yeah. <laughs> or do I start now so I'm ready for the summer? <laughs> Um, it's that sort of analogy. If you start now and you start making the preparations, when the restrictions ease, then you will just be ahead of the game um, and be ready to do it. So do that prep, get your dating coaching in, get your profiles organized, go online, tell your friends and family you're looking um, to meet someone and do all that groundwork so that when we can, you'll be at the head of the queue and you can forge ahead. Completely agree with you 100% there. And what I've noticed is people that are putting their love lives on hold, all they're doing is putting their happiness on pause. That's all they're doing. We don't know how long this is going to go on for. By taking action, doing something about this, you're going to be absolutely ready, ready to go and meet somebody. Do the prep now. And I completely understand about the whole running business. I, I started running before Christmas and I haven't been out that much since then because of the snow, because of the rain. But maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I'm going to go out. Well, then more snow is due tomorrow. On there. Oh, I, I go running after this, James. I'm, I'm gonna. Are I you? can't give out this advice and not heed it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to do it now. I'm gonna have to hold, hold me to that and to do that. <laughs> let's go. Let's go running. Get our trainers on. <laughs> get runners, yeah, I'm enjoying the fact that my house is empty of children at the moment, but that's another story. <laughs> oh no, stay put. If you've got to say that <laughs> until they come in, I'm gonna go out. Talking of children, actually, it's another question I wanted to ask you because of the whole pandemic and the whole situation. I've heard lots of talk there might be a baby boom coming. Because when it gets cold and people are a bit lonely, then more babies are being are being made. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? I, I think that's going to be the case. If I look at my personal circle of friends, it is one baby announcement after another. <laughs> um, so I think all maternity wards at hospitals are going to be uh, very busy soon. I mean, not that they're not busy enough at the moment, um, but, um, <laughs> but they're going to be very busy in the coming year or two. But I think that relates back to looking at our success rate of relationships. Although last year, you know, we were in the midst of a pandemic, we had the highest success rate of people getting into long term relationships. And that's because people aren't living these fast paced, dismissive lives anymore. Um, we're actually taking our time because we have more of it and we're doing less than we usually do. So I, I've got a number of relationships at the moment where I think actually if we weren't in a pandemic, I'm not sure you would have given that introduction the time of day, whereas people had nothing to lose. Um, we, we're just in this culture and it is very much um, heightened by online dating where you can just swipe or, you know, the grass is greener there's so much on offer that your choices there's an abundance of choice so therefore you can't settle on one choice um you're always thinking there could be something better around the corner so you just don't take the time and live in the present it's always about what's coming what's in the future but what happened last year is that um people had nothing to lose so i introduced people and they, they might have thought well i'm not quite sure on attraction or actually you know they cycle do i do that all the tiny little details that people will dismiss unnecessarily in my mind um they actually gave it a chance and said well why not you know I've got nothing to lose it'd be lovely to chat to someone that you know we do have things in common and maybe a friendship will come out of it if nothing else so many of those people are in relationships and they built that rapport over the telephone and and that's lasted after lockdown and into the meeting and so we had one of the highest success rates last year in terms of converting people into relationships and it's because we just gave it a bit more time and we weren't so dismissive and we weren't so fast paced in our actions and I think that is the silver lining to come out of all of this and so yes I think there have been a heightened and an abundance of relationships and therefore babies will be coming. <laughs> I think so, but I also think some people who might do it the more traditional way, as in want to get married first and then have children, yeah. <laughs> they they might be thinking, well, I can't get married yet, I'm going to hold off, and therefore people might not have children in the same way they would before. Or they yeah. might just get on with it and think, I don't care anymore. <laughs> and exactly. just do that. That's actually very, very common for a lot of my friends. Mm. Um, you know, they had their weddings planned, they've been cancelled a few times, and actually they've just changed things. You know, we have this sort of relationship model and you've got to meet someone and then 18 months later you might get engaged and then you get married and then you have children and throw a pandemic in there for a couple of years and you've got to change that structure. And so I think that's what we'll see is the whole relationship structure changing quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, why wait? Um, 
we, we've, how, who knows how long we'll have to be waiting for, but you can still meet people, you can still build relationships, you can still have that rapport, you don't have to put your life on hold, we just might be doing things in a little bit of a different way in a different order, that's all. Completely agree, we had a chance for a massive reset now on the way that we think things through, and I think you said you had a great year last year, and the same for me, I've been really so busy, never been as busy in 15 years. Yeah. I think what's happened, we've gone back to the way things were maybe before online dating, before the internet existed, when you had maybe a smaller pool of opportunities and smaller people around you, but you weren't as picky because you had to sort of make the best of what you had. You weren't always thinking, well, he's really nice, but maybe I can go to another town, another village and find somebody else. And that's mm -hmm. what people do. By focusing on somebody who could be a perfectly good, amazing life partner who is very near to you or even been introduced to you, then that's what they used to do. And that's how our our parents and our grandparents and great, 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 great grandparents used to do it. There was no thinking, well, I might be able to do better. I might be able to swipe it into the whole thing. So it's given us this huge reset now, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm very, very positive that this year we're going to be able to help so many more people. Have you, seen, think, have you seen that as well? Yes, yeah. very much so. And I think those methods that we're talking about that perhaps our parents did and our grandparents did, they are the ones that last and forge lasting relationships and matchmaking is something that's been around for centuries and it still is so you can't dismiss it those methods do work and it's not a case of you know you talk about being picky and it's not a case of there's a lesser pool available so you lower your standards that's not it it's just you notice what's in front of you rather than whizzing past it because we're so busy that we can't spot what's in front of our face that's exactly. all it's done it's just made us realize that the opportunities are there and if we take a step back and look at them and, you know, don't miss the opportunities, then then that's how things will happen. And that's the sort of old fashioned matchmaking way. It's not the fast paced overnight, quick gratification of online dating, but it's the lasting one. It's the things that work and it's taking that time investment to make sure it's the right person and the values and the morals and all those important things which create uh, the longevity of a relationship rather than the quick Oh, he's got brown eyes. I prefer blue. Move on. <laughs> this is so common, unfortunately. It's about quality rather than quantity. And yeah. matchmakers create opportunities. They're going to help you meet people that you never might have the chance to meet in normal life, particularly nowadays. So if somebody wanted to find out more about you and to see what you do, how would they find you, Hayley? So our website, bows-lionpartnership.co.uk, and we are a very friendly team of matchmakers so the best thing to do I'm a big uh, big advocate of picking up the telephone and having a chat and finding out about someone's background and lifestyle and what their aspirations are for the future and then we can see whether we can help them um so yes although there are you know the the old I kind of take the technology out of things yes you can fill in the form yes you can read our website yes there's lots of articles about us and our social media pick up the phone let's have a chat <laughs> Absolutely agree. It's the only way you're going to find out about rapport and how you get on with someone. You've got to trust your matchmaker. And I'm pretty sure you're going to trust and like Hayley, anyone that's listening, because they always do. Everyone that I've sent is, has joined up very quickly. And I'm very impressed with that. Hayley, it has been, as always, an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And thank you very much for coming on today. Thank you, James. It's been a really enjoyable morning. I'm off for my run. Are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got some clients, first of all, <laughs> today. <laughs> I've got a few clients. Maybe later on this evening I might go for a run. I get a chance. <laughs> but if not, tomorrow. After my and thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Hayley. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to give you a free copy of my latest book, which you can download right now from my website, jamespriest.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could share the love by taking a few seconds to write a positive review on the iTunes store right now. See you next time.